Welcome back everyone. Um, Steve from Steve's Place Down Under. Today we're going to start up the 503 Galleon Grader. We're going to use it, which is starting to tidy the roads up before the wedding comes. So I thought I'd do a talk about the engine swap and everything in it. For those, there is a video back, but I've gained a lot more subscribers since then. So for those of you who haven't gone back, I'll explain it again. So Dad just come up to me and said, we, we use this to tidy all the roads. We've got about a kilometre of roads here in my place. Like it's, a fair, it's a fair bit really. Um, we just use it to not only tidy the roads up, but if all the grass starts creeping in on the road and, and we use it to pull that in and heap it up and get rid of it. So this is a 503 Galleon. I'll do a walk around in a minute. I got this from an Appen motocross track, which is a, a, a town here, sort of south of Sydney, I, I guess. A bloke from work put me onto it. They were using it there to do the motocross track and, and, and had, it had a UD 236 diesel in it. Now UD 236 was basically a gasoline or a petrol block with it had an injector pump grafted onto it with a diesel head with injectors so they were fairly weak I believe um, and that threw a leg out of bed. What I mean by that is the rod came out through the side of the block and when I went and got it I took the grey Kenworth with the little float over there you've probably seen the background I'll put the seat in a minute with my missus and we drove over there and that and Bloke lifted on with a, with a 50 tonne Komatsu excavator, I think it was. And brought it back. I thought it was a flat top, because it didn't have ramps, that's right. Anyway, the leg was hanging out of bed. Then we, when I got it home, we poked the oxy in through and, and blew that rod off. I know this is rough, and I don't care what you say, because the motor was rooted anyhow. And blew that rod off, took it out, undone the bearing cap, um, Block the oil journal off with a bolt and a, and a just a hose clamp, and um, I still had pressure and diverted the injector line back into the tank, at the top of the tank there, and we drove it off on five cylinders and we used it like that for about I don't know three years I suppose. When I say three years, it was probably only ten hours work, but it, it still did it, and then it started to get another rattle, so I took it out. So I did a job for a bloke. He had a Series 60 Toyota Land Cruiser, 1984 model, and he, he, he drove it from 84 till, I don't know, this has been four years ago, I suppose. I did this four or five years ago, and he just completely wore it out. It was on the highway using oil, um, so he, he, we upgraded it. So I got the engine out of a, a later model 80 series, and, and uh, I put that into the 60 Series Land Cruiser, and I didn't ask him for any money, so I kept the, it's a 2H Toyota six-cylinder straight-six diesel um, with an aftermarket turbo on it, so it's now 2H turbo. So I said, well, don't, don't pay me, he's a, he's a Vietnam War vet, so he, he does a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of stuff with the, with the vets that are, that are struggling, and he, he puts a lot of time into that, and I appreciate that sort of thing, so I... I wasn't going to charge him. He's he's a he's a battler himself, so I don't I don't I look after blokes like that. So I said, well, give me that old motor. He wasn't going to do anything with it, and, and here it is. Now I'll do a walk around. My dad's just doing a take five on her and a a bit of a uh, pre-start. So again, it, it was a six-cylinder uh, international diesel. I will show you that engine when I go back up. I still got it. Um, I said to the bloke, I want this, I want this Toyota engine and I, want, I was going to graft it into this grader, which I did. So you can see the big turbo hanging out the side there. I think it's got close to 900,000 on it, but she doesn't use oil here. It was, it was on the highway getting up to speeds, but she just pokes about here and does the job just fine. So what I did, it's an SAE4 bell housing. Um, I had a I've got a 453 Detroit because these come out with three-cylinder 353 Detroits as well and I had a four-cylinder up there I was going to graft into it but I had to put a kit through it. I've got two of them actually and I didn't want to spend that money when this ran so how I grafted it was that the bell housing in there you can see it's still yellow when it's bolted onto the bluey greeny coloured Toyota block here. should be blue. Um, I unbolted the Toyota one and unbolted the International one and I found centre and bolted the International one to the Toyota. 
that was step one. So you can see I've got a few, few different holes. Like I had to drill the holes, none of them lined up at all. So ground center in that, then I measured all the flywheel. So the flywheel on the Toyota engine is the one off the international engine. So I've done all the measurements with just a steel rule and some straight edges and um, a mate of mine worked in a brake shop and he I took it into him and he milled, I haven't got a milling machine, so he milled it all out to suit and drilled it for the clutch. So it's still the international uh, grade, or well, galleon or international, whoever supplied the clutch in those days, wouldn't have been any of them that made it, but whoever had it. Got all that to fit. It's got a live drive running from the center of the crank right through to run the hydraulic pump. So no matter whether it's in or out of gear, the hydraulics work. So I, I made that, it's like a little, rather than a spigot bearing, it's a, uh, Oh, it's a splined, so your, your transmission center bearing or spigot bearing. This is actually a spline, which is a similar thing. So that, that taps in the end of the crank. So we, we machine that down to fit in there. So it's got hydraulics all the time. And basically it slid straight in there. Now the next problem was the starter. I'll just show you back around here. You can see that there. So. I don't know if you can see that welding. I cut the starter cone off, which was on this side when it was original, because the starter wouldn't fit because of all this oil cooler and filter and everything. I wasn't going to get rid of that. So I cut the cone off and just plated that back up with some cast rods because that, that housing is cast. Just put some flat bar in there and, and made a patch that back up. And then I grafted the starter cone onto this side. You can see done that there so that that starter there is the original one off the off the grader itself so off the international engine so it all basically from here forward it's just spinning it like the international did it's just spinning that flywheel and everything's the same so um, just made these engine mounts up at the back now they are rubber mounted which it shouldn't be because well, the, the drop box and the transmissions rubber mounted so I just thought I'd give that a bit of movement there but didn't want too much because that's supporting the transmission also. Um, that's about it. And I just, just wired it up to glow plugs and start in here and then a couple of gauges just to see what she's doing. But the alternator doesn't charge because I bought a what I thought was a single wire, but it's actually a, a, an alternator off a 2H when they had a remote mounted regulator. So I had to disconnect it because it was getting hot, which is no problem. It doesn't need to charge anyway, so that's it. That's about it. That's the story of that and it works great. It works really well And now we're gonna see if she goes. I sat here for I don't know 18 months, maybe um, We don't use it all the time only for the roads. So they don't they don't stuff out all the time only when they get covered in grass So we just Check her over now doesn't use any oil doesn't use any water only fuel so is that the right get that's the fuel gauge there. I had it wired up. You didn't pull the wire off it, did you? No, nah, no. Nah. How come? I thought it was one off the Mac. <laughs> oh, it might be. Yeah. Oh, that, that, no, that one there's off the Mac. Oh, right. That one there. Yeah. We're just going to try the battery that was uh, left in it from 18 months ago. It's been disconnected, but... You leave the GPS in there. Yeah, no, I took the mushroom off, though. Oh, it's up in the house. Someone Did you take the screen out? Yeah. I'll have to upload that file in it too for that road out the front. Right. So that little bird you can hear up in the tree, it, it, it's... Well, I'd like you to hear the turbo whistle, but he's probably overpowering it at the moment. I'm just going to see if this battery works here. She generally fires right up if you glow it, glow it enough. The only thing I haven't hooked up is the brakes. It's got hydraulic brakes on each wheel, but it's also got a transmission. You won't need revs, I don't think. It's got a transmission brake on the front of the transmission. I might just hook the pedal up to that, but we, yeah, we haven't needed them yet. It's just another thing. You get them going and you don't do. It's a common sound around here. It's as much as, you hear that as much as the birds, flat batteries. Okay, got another battery and we'll see what happens now. Battery did all right just to even wind it, to be honest. It's been in there that long. Okay, we've got another battery in it. We're going to try this one. 
Only the battery that was flat. There she goes, look at that. take us for a walk and show you the engine that came out of it. Probably an old bloody Houston Brown lane in here somewhere. Ah, there it is there. So you can see the UD236, basically a, a, a gasoline or a petrol engine with the d diesel head on it. Please you international blaze, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just what I'm led to believe and there's a lot of evidence pointing towards it. See the bell house and the flywheel's missing. Um, uh, there's a few few things I wanted to show you, but it's there's that 453 I was talking about. There's the bell housing to match SAE4. Um, another one up in the other shed. So you can see on this engine here, you see that where they uh, the distributor would have been when it was when it was petrol or gasoline or gas. Um, you can see that there is a road sign I glued over the hole in the block when we were running it on five cylinders. So now it's, I don't know, parts. If I get a, might get an international tractor or something that needs an injector pump or some squirters maybe, but I'd say the engine itself's had it. But that's, that's it for that one. We'll go and, we'll go and do the rust on the cylinder. Yeah, that beautiful clean Toyota sound, that turbo whistle on it. boat yesterday for something that's going on here in Australia but um, we got too late by the time we got back so it's Sunday morning now he's going to finish it off then we'll go along with the with that new Holland and, and pick all that up and keep it in a heap all that dirt with the grass in it and top dressing the lawn and everything even though it's got gravel it's still got a lot of grass in it
you're watching me, you watch Diesel Creek too. He's a big, big American bloke that sort of I, I used to watch a lot of him. I don't as much anymore. But Jeffrey knows the reasons for that if you're watching, mate. But uh, he's got the same grader he calls Christine. I'm sure a lot of you's watching if you found my channel. Exactly the same model, but his was his was gas or petrol. So this was diesel from factory, and his was uh, obviously gas, petrol. But exactly the same model. the same day we're doing the Louisville and the Kenworth for those of you who see that episode as well. Thank you all for watching again. Thank you to those seven Patreon members. That's just fantastic. Um, merchandise shop, link in the description, but uh, channel description, I think, not in the episode description. But thanks to those people, those six orders a week we're getting, that's just amazing. And um, there's plenty more going to happen here with the trucks and tractors. And after the wedding, it's just going to we're going to have a lot more time. So stay around for that. So. Thanks everyone again for watching.